Hello and welcome to another Unreal Engine tutorial. Today we're going to be having a second look at an older tutorial idea of mine, the uh, day-night cycle. I recently did this in um, Unreal Engine 4 quite a few versions ago, so I thought I'd revisit this in Unreal Engine 5 to have another look at sort of the new tech and components that we get to play with in the new versions of the engine. So I'm um, just uh, open here in the uh, third person map in a fresh project. So to start, let's just make ourselves a new copy of this level. We'll just go save current level as already made myself a little folder here for all of our assets and we'll just call this day night underscore map so we'll save that and we'll jump over to our folder and we'll see that i've got a couple of things here for you a little care package i've put together one is this sky sphere which as you can see looks a little strange because all the faces are pointing inwards this is going to act as our night sky with all of our stars and such and the other is this milky way panorama which you can download for free. It's a completely free to use image. I will include it in a download link in the description below, as well as a link to the original website where you can find this and some other, other bits and pieces, other very cool images. We will worry about that a little later. For now, let's just get the bulk of our mechanics working. So like every level, our new day night map here has a level. We open this up and find that it is empty. Uh, this is just a blueprint that we can use that the, the level will execute sort of in its own space. And we can call on the actual in the level objects inside our level blueprint, such as our directional light. So we'll grab our directional light, right click our event here, and we can see we can create a reference to that directional light. All right, brilliant. The next thing I'd like to do is, actually while we're here, we'll grab all of these walls. I just want to bring them down so that when we're actually in game, uh, it'll be a little more nicer to look at. And I also want to, in our game mode override, set the third person game mode. So when we hit play, here we go. We have our good looking mannequin here and in the third person map and a little bit more, a little bit more viewing distance out to the horizon. All right, might get rid of this text as well, just while we're mucking around. And if we grab the skylight, cause we want to be able to see things at nighttime. And if there's no light, then this real time capture is not going to do the job for us. We want to set this to a specified cube map and we'll just grab this epic courtyard. All right, so that uh, prepares our level, at least for a start. So we'll save all and then go to our level blueprint and begin to build out some of our functionality. So let's grab the event tick. This is just an event that's going to be running every single frame. So everything that comes out of this will be executed once every time a frame renders. So we can take our directional light here, get the actor rotation. Where is it? There we are, get actor rotation. We'll actually split this because all we need is the Y channel. And before I forget, we'll make sure that our directional light, yeah, it's got some rotation values already in it. So we'll just zero all those out. Get rid of that pesky minus 46 default value. Just leave it at all zeros and we'll work on it from here. So we'll save all again, back into our level blueprint. Grab this Y axis. Uh, actually, we'll grab out of, the, out of the directional light here. We'll add Add actor world rotation. We'll split this pin as well. We'll just grab our Y value there. Um, let's see. Well, um, okay. One thing we should consider is frame rate. Actually, we want to be able to regulate this effect, no matter what, uh, no matter what the frame rate of the machine is 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 performing at. So we'll take our delta seconds here and multiply this by our rotation value, rather our adjusted rotation value, which will be this. Let's say with a multiply, not a multiply, we'll just add, we'll just add a little bit. Add say a 0 0.1, plug this into the result of this multiply. Actually, we'll give this a, give this a one and plug this in. This goes into the Y value there, compile. Then we hit play. Okay, it's currently night time. It's currently night time. It might be moving quite slowly. Might not be moving at all. Oh, well, it is, it is moving. I think I skipped it. Let's add a bit more here so we can see it a bit more quickly. Oh yeah, now we've got some motion. So if I'm facing this way, there it is. Oh, there's the sunrise. Seems to have stopped. Okay, I think it's hit a maximum value and that's as far as it's going to go. Okay, so let's build out some functionality here. Let's grab an in range float node because we want to capture the actual range of our uh, of our angle here. We want to find the actual values of its minimum and maximum, and we can use a print string node to help us do that. So I'll plug in this print string and we'll grab our return value here, our Y. We'll just plug that straight into the print string, hit play. 
You can see, okay, numbers going up to 90 and then coming back down and coming to a stop somewhere around that 15 point. Okay, but we can affect this. We can make some changes here. Let's see, we'll delete that. We use our in range here to be from minus 90, maybe minus 90 to zero. This will be the daylight hours. The negative values will be when the sun is above us. And uh, we need to select float. Something else that's nice to do is make our nighttime slightly shorter than the daytime, sort of reflect the more temperate months of the year. And, you know, contextually, you might want to have that kind of control. So we've got our floats here. Let's make two float variables. And this one will be called sun speed. We'll make sure it's a float. And then um, nights, night length. Okay, we'll compile so that we can use those. Control click and drag to get these both in. This can go straight into A. Um, do I want to actually, what if I select flow? There we go. Yeah, I prefer to see an A and a B. So sun speed into A, and we'll multiply our sun speed by this night length multiplier, which is going to be a much shorter, uh, or shorter, much smaller number. And then this can go into our multiplier with our, uh, with our delta seconds. All right, brilliant. So this should work okay. Let's give ourselves a little space here. Got to set some default values into our variables here. So our sun speed is going to be 15 for starters. Our night length, three. So we'll compile this. Now we can keep that print string disconnected for now, then hit play. And we'll see how that looks. Actually, let's crank up our sun speed. We'll double that, we'll go up to 30. There it goes. There goes our sun. And below the horizon, now it's nighttime. Now it's nice and dark. All right, brilliant. So that's the core functionality all done. We can get rid of our little print string here. So this shows us how we can use just the rotation of our directional light in the level blueprint so that we can create a very, very simple day and night cycle. All right, well, we could just end the video here, but I thought we'd go one further and introduce a little flair. We'll get some style points. So we'll compile and save everything. Come back here to my map. And actually, I think I might want to make our Skylight here, just a little darker. Get a slightly darker nighttime. All right, we'll save everything again. The, other, uh, the next thing we'll do is, I think we have one here, if this is a post-process volume. It is. Um, I just want to regulate our exposure. All right, so they're both already set at zero, so that's actually good. We don't need to do any more modification there. Okay, um, what were we doing? Right, our sky sphere. So we've got our sky sphere mesh here. Let's just drag that into the middle, plonk that there, and Give it a gigantic scale, something like oh, 14,000. There we go. So that's going to be above us in the sky. And in fact, if we click the sky, it's our sky sphere mesh, hit F. There it is. We can see it. Then if you can see the top here, so that's by how much it's smaller than our actual sky sphere. So we've got quite a gigantic circle here that we're working with. Uh, let's just zoom back in or grab something close in. There we are. And. Now we can make our material. So let's right click on our Milky Way and go to create material. We'll just call this Milky Way underscore mat, and we'll open it up. We'll set our material here to a translucent material. We'll pull this back. And we just want to set a couple of scalar parameters here that we can affect inside our level blueprint. Well, we are from the static mesh object. So let's we'll get two multipliers. We'll hold an S and click to get a scalar parameter. This will be called glow crank. This will affect the brightness. Hold an S and click again, and this we call opacity. Call it opacity multi. So we'll just set both of these to one for the time being, and plug these into the B of each of these multipliers. This first one, this RGB one, can go straight into emissive. Um, don't think we really need anything. Ah, oh, we'll leave that plugged in the base color for now. We'll see how that looks. As for our opacity, we better desaturate our texture. So come out of here into a desaturation, plug this into our multiplier, and then that goes into opacity. All right, brilliant. So we've got sort of a starry effect going on there. So back over in our level, we click on our sky sphere. Uh, there's our material. Let's just make ourselves a material instance and drag this over here to element zero. Look at that. Look at that beautiful night sky. How glorious. How truly glorious. All right, brilliant. We've got our actual true to life as well. This is the real Milky Way. Awesome, okay, well that's in our level, so we can save everything. And now let's jump back over to our level blueprint and we can muck about with some other tricky things. Let's get this get this sky animated. 
All right, so like before, if we grab a reference to our sky sphere because we had it selected in the viewport, then grab the static mesh component. This is the actual, the actual component, the actual static mesh uh, that makes up this object in the world. Then if we come straight off here, we can just set scalar parameter value on materials. And we'll need two of these because we created two scalars in our material. Make sure the targets are both this static mesh. First one was called cloak rank. Second one was called opacity multi. Okay, with both of those set up and we can even plug them in, we need to give these guys some values. Now the problem we have with our uh, setup here is the numbers. It's going from minus 90 up to zero, then up to 90, then back down to zero, and then back down to minus 90 in this sort of oscillating pattern. But what we need is more of a linear zero to one range throughout the span of a day. So if we think sort of mathematically about what it means to have a minus 90 to positive 90, uh, we can sort of make some make some moves to get the right numbers that we need by doing things like, for example, because it's 90 and 90, if we divide by 90, we'll get minus one to positive one. Then if we add one, we get one to two, a range of one to two. Then if we simply divide this by two, we get a range of zero to one, and that's the entire length of our day. From here, all we need to do is get a multiply, plug this into our glow crank value here, get another multiply, come out of our divide, and hook this up to our, our second one, our opacity multi. And we can even make variables for these. So if I drag off here and promote, this will be our glow crank, and drag off here and promote, this will be opacity. And for starters, let's just multiply by one, and we'll get a bit of extra glow. We'll multiply that by two, then compile, hit save, back in our main level, hit play. Okay, we'll see how the sky looks at nighttime. Once the sun sets, seeing some stars coming out. There we go. Okay, so it's a bit quick. So it's coming and fading fairly fast. <laughs> we'll wait here. There it is, there's the sky, and there it goes. So. Yeah, we, we have this guy there, it's just the sun is a bit fast, but we can change that if we increase, if we use higher values for our sun speed, then it will increase the speed of our cycle. So if we reduce this down to something like five, we'll give the night length. So the night length is gonna be, was that three times as quick as the sun. So compile that, hit play again. All right, there's our, there's our, our skies fading in, it's coming brighter and it's going to slowly fade out. So this is really, really the end of the tutorial, guys. On the dawn of a new day, the day-night cycle has come together. It's much simpler than before, much less complex. No moon this time, no clock, but I may revisit these in a, in a future video. Back to our regularly programmed programming, regularly scheduled programming from here on out, hopefully, guys. Looking forward to it. If you have any requests, please let me know. The easiest way to get in touch with me is on Discord. There will be a link in the description. Be sure to like the video, share it around and stuff. Have a go at this and see what you think. Try and come up with something creative. I love seeing what the community is making. And uh, until the next one, guys, cheers.